Well, hey, howdy, hi, you're welcome, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by to join me today. I really do appreciate it. My name is Ellie, and I am a witch, and this over here is my gifting assistant, Andy. And today is Monday, and on my channel, that means it is misheard history. And today's history topic is going to be foods that we originally thought were poisonous, and I'll kind of go into why we thought they were poisonous, and if they actually still are. If you're not interested in history, however, I do have two other series on my channel. Yesterday, uh, Sundays, I talked about cryptids, and yesterday specifically, I talked about two cryptids in Mississippi. And then on Tuesdays, I do tea time and true crime, and then tomorrow's tea time and true crime is the Grim Sleeper or Lonnie Franklin. So, let's start talking about foods that we thought were poisonous, still are poisonous, or why? <laughs> So I just want to start this video by saying this has not quite gone how I thought it was going to. It really was hard to find foods that we thought were poisonous, however now look back on and laugh at, but almost all of these can genuinely be poisonous. So obviously aside from tomatoes, which I do have on the list, um, any compilation like this should have tomatoes on the list, but it's mainly just a list of foods that can be and are poisonous, and I'll just kind of go through them and tell you when not to eat them. If you do know any that were historically thought to be poisonous but aren't actually, please let me know in the comments. It can be very difficult to find examples as new foods were always trial and error for our ancestors. So obviously I'm going to start with tomatoes. Now these are a prominent member of the nightshade family, which is actually a classification that helped to kind of add part of the negative stigma around the tomatoes. So before people knew that you could eat the fruit of a nightshade plant, just not the light leaves and stems, they avoided the plant as a whole, though they did grow nightshade plants for aesthetic purposes, including tomatoes and potatoes. When people did realize that tomatoes were edible and rather versatile, we get the misunderstanding that led to people once again distrusting the plants. So people would use pewter plates, which were very high in lead, and tomatoes are naturally acidic, which means that when a tomato or tomato product was put on a pewter plate, the acid would leach the lead into the food, making it then deadly to ingest. There are plenty of countries around the world that did still choose to eat the fruit, and there were plenty of people that were still wary. Until the erosion of pizza in Naples, at which point no one really cared if there was a chance of death, it was well worth it for a slice of pizza. Next up is potatoes, and like tomatoes, potatoes are part of the nightshade family. Now this is because they contain solanine, which is a glycoloid, which is a toxin we first pinpointed in black nightshade berries. Of all the plants that contain solanine, potatoes are the most likely to make you sick or even kill you. So you can denote what parts of the potato are not edible, and it's the green parts. This includes the stem, leaves, berries, and any green spots on the potato, though it is rare to be killed by a potato. The last verified case of sickness caused by solanine poisoning was actually in 1983, and no one died in that case. So while potatoes are actually potentially poisonous in the modern day, we can date potatoes back as a purposefully grown crop back to about 3500 BCE in Peru. There is some speculation that they could go even further back, but they don't really preserve well. So potatoes were the beginning of the breeding process to make edible potatoes. While potatoes were bitter and much more poisonous than what we have today, it didn't help that the rest of the plant is also dangerous, so the whole belief around potatoes was not positive, but humans are stubborn and they were able to crossbreed them and make them edible, though we aren't entirely sure how they did manage to do that or why. It was then about 2,000 years later that Europe finally got potatoes, though they were grown for their looks and people weren't eating them due to their nightshade status. Eventually, poor citizens started to eat them, which helped with the hunger issues because potatoes are filling, high in carbs, and can be grown in abundance. Now, due to this, the popularity, of course, grew, and obviously we still see that potatoes are a staple in households today. Next up is mushrooms. And there are non-toxic varieties of mushrooms, but there are many, many mushrooms types that are genuinely toxic and can kill you. This means that it is not recommended that you eat any mushroom that you find because there's a higher chance of you putting something deadly in your mouth than something edible. 
This would also be true for ancient peoples, however, they didn't really have the foresight that most mushrooms are dangerous, and they would often just put anything vaguely food-shaped into their mouths. They did discover, though, this trial and error process, that there are plenty of varieties that were hallucinogenic when taken at the right amounts. I did go over Amanita muscaria in my Creatures of Christmas video, check that out, but there is one that we knew was fun in low doses, so humans began the trial and error of eating other mushrooms to see what would happen. But with that came plenty of death, so of course there was the fear that every mushroom was dangerous and really should be avoided. But instead of always ingesting them, people started trying to figure out if they could tell what the effects would be without dying. So this process was you would first cut open the mushroom, and then you'd rub it against your skin, and you'd wait to see if something happened. And if nothing occurred, you'd then take a small bite and wait. This process led us to realize there were anti-inflammatory properties of certain mushrooms, and then we began to use those in medicine. We were also able to gauge any hallucinogenic properties. Mushrooms were then incorporated into religious festivities in Greece, and they were also able to start categorizing the different types by their effects. The knowledge then spread, and eventually mycologists, which is people who study mushrooms, were able to dissect and analyze mushrooms without having to risk death in the process. Next is Lily of the Valley and Ramsum weed. Now this one's really less of a we thought they were poisonous and more of a misunderstanding, but one of them is actually poisonous, so I get the pass to talk about it. So Lily of the Valley is a flowering plant with a white bell-shaped flower. They were actually the favorite flower of Queen Elizabeth II, and they were popular among some botanists for their beauty. Now, ramsum weed is not an ugly plant, they also have very pretty white flower blooms, but they have a very strong garlicky odor when you rub the leaves. So the leaves in the flower can both be added to salad to get kind of a mild garlic flavor, or just fry them up in the place of garlic in a recipe. The problem comes from the fact that it's easy to confuse the two plants, especially when you're just talking about the leaves. Lily of the Valley, though, does not have a garlic odor, so if you want to be sure, just kind of rub the leaves. If they smell like garlic, you get to eat it. If they don't, do not eat them. Lily of the Valley is poisonous, so don't eat it, and be very sure to keep children and animals away from any part of the plant. Next, we have rhubarb, and this one is not really popular anymore. It was more common in the 70s and 80s. These were only popularized when people realized that you can add sugar and or cook them to make it actually taste good. So the leaves of the plant contain oxacillic acid, which at the right doses can be lethal, but more than likely you're just going to get a bit of food poisoning if you choose to eat some of the leaves. The idea that the whole plant was poisonous comes from early people not wasting parts of plants or animals. It was again trial and error. If you were going to eat the stalk and leaves in one go, you'd be fair to assume that the entire plant just made you sick. Eventually, we did discover that it's just the leaves that will make you ill, and that the stalks were edible, and that there are so many ways to prepare it, though most people nowadays would likely only recognize them from rhubarb pies. So this is the beginning of my do not eat these raw section of the video. These are the things that are edible, but you have to make sure they're cooked properly so you don't hurt yourself. And eating them raw, being the reason that people originally assumed they were just overall poisonous, and to kick off this section, we are going to be talking about the yucca root, which is also known as cassava. Now, there are two different types of cassava, which is sweet and bitter. And in the United States, you'll find the sweet kind 9 out of 10 times. You can grind it down to make tapioca, pudding, or it's used as a thickening agent. Both kinds, though, can be used to make bread, french fries, cassava chips, and countless other things. It is known for the nutrients it contains, those being fiber, calcium, and protein. However, do not eat it raw. In its raw state, it contains a type of naturally occurring cyanide. Though, even if you cook it, make sure to be careful because prepared incorrectly, it can still be dangerous. Some of the observed effects of raw or incorrectly prepared cassava are paralyzed legs, predominantly in children, neuropathy, and in some cases, death. If you are still interested in preparing it yourself, I definitely can give you the steps, so write it down. First, you're going to want to peel the root and then cut it into small pieces and then soak those pieces in water, which according to the CDC, you need to soak it for four to six days. You then boil the pieces until they are tender and make sure you discard the cooking water immediately. Overall, make sure you purchase from a reputable seller and always closely follow any directions that are on the packaging. Next up is lima beans, and now I personally have actually never seen lima beans, and they aren't very popular at the moment, but there are still plenty of people who have liked, or still like, and eat them. These are another potentially deadly food, though. 
Lima beans contain linamarin, which when ingested turns into cyanide. Now, eating a few raw lima beans likely won't kill you if you're an adult, but it's still not worth that risk, and definitely keep the raw form away from children. Now, in the United States, they contain very little linamarin, so if you cook them for at least 10 minutes, you should be safe to eat them with no ill effects, but to be safe, many people recommend cooking them for at least 30 minutes. Next is kidney beans. Now, if you're a fan of chili, you may be disappointed to find out that kidney beans are toxic. They contain lectin, which isn't deadly necessarily, but can and will give you a nasty case of food poisoning. I should clarify, though, that it's the raw or incorrectly prepared kidney beans that are dangerous. If you soak beans and then boil them for 30 minutes, the level of lectin will be low enough that you won't get sick. With that being said, do not cover the pot that is cooking your kidney beans, otherwise they will retain the lectin and you'll still end up sick. Also, slow cookers or crock pots do not reach boiling temperatures, so do not use raw kidney beans in your recipes. Make sure you either cook them thoroughly before adding them or just use canned beans which are already cooked. Next up is tamatillos, and these are another member of the nightshade family. If you've ever had one, it was likely in a green salsa because the fruit itself is very popular and not toxic, as long as it's ripe. So the plant itself is toxic, containing solanine. Now the tomatillo grows inside of a papery leaf lantern casing. This layer is also toxic, and if the fruit isn't ripe, it can contain dangerous levels of solanine. With these, just make sure the fruit is ripe, Always clean the fruit so there is no transfer of solanine from the lantern casing, and please keep pets away from it as they are likely to die from ingesting the plant, even if you aren't. So last thing on this list is elderberries. Now there are several varieties of elderberry, and they've all been used for hundreds of years for medicinal purposes. Even today, you can go and get elderberry juice or medicine. The entire plant is toxic though. The stem, leaves, seeds, and uncooked berries all of which can cause food poisoning symptoms if ingested. Eating the cooked berries is fine and not lethal, but there have been several cases of people drinking a juice blend, including elderberries, and having adverse effects, the most recent case actually being in 1983. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you for joining me on that little trip. Uh, really sad to learn that uh, kidney beans dangerous to cook. I don't think I've ever had a reason to. I use canned kidney beans. They're already cooked, make it really easy, but Gotta be careful, I guess, with your food. You never know what can be or is poisonous. That's crazy to me. But if you do know any that are, like, historically kind of more in the family of, like, tomatoes, please let me know. This was so hard to research, and I want the knowledge, and it's just so hard to find because if you Google historically poisonous plants, you're going to get plants that are poisonous, which is most of what this list was. But... Just be aware of what you're eating, how you're cooking it, and just keep things away from children and pets that could hurt them. Make sure that if you have children or pets, you're aware of what could hurt them. But if you liked the video, hit that thumbs up button and tell Andy hi in the comments for engagement. If you didn't like the video, hit that thumbs down button and tell me what you think I can improve in the comments down below. I really do appreciate that as well. Make sure you subscribe if you're interested in history, true crime, or crooked content. And with all that being said, I will see you guys next time. Bye!